Hi everyone, um, welcome to the Four Ways to Fly Your Flag tutorial. I'm Caitlin from Stitched Up and this is part of the Celebrate Festival. So I'm just going to go through with you um, a bit of a tutorial and demonstration for Four Ways to Fly Your Flag. So you can see here, um, I have already cut out my banner and flag stencil. And the first tutorial we're gonna run through is the banner one. So I've cut this out with my paper scissors and I'm all ready to go. And then what you wanna do is place that on fabric. Like so, and you wanna get as close to the edge as possible so you're not wasting any fabric. And then what you can either do, if you have pins at home, you can pin this down and then cut it out. Or if not, you can draw around it with a pencil, with some chalk, um, and you just draw around where you need to cut out. And then when you take it away, you could see where you need to cut out and you'd cut it out. And then when you're done, it should look something a little bit like this, all nice and cut out of fabric. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is draw this line in here. Um, so the way I've done that is I've measured three centimetres down here and three centimetres down here and done a little mark. And then I've just joined it up with a ruler so it's nice and straight and you have um, a line there that you can see. And this is so that we know when we're going to do our design now, we're going to do it on this section. We're not going to do it on this top bit here and we're just going to do it below the line because that's going to get folded over later. So now is the fun bit for this bit, we're gonna um, choose how to do our design. Um, so these flags are meant to represent um, Wally Range and the community around there. Um, so I'm gonna, for this one, I'm going to do um, some little people on some fabric um, just to represent how great the community is in Wally Range. Um, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna do some little stick people on these and then um, sew them on. Uh, sew them onto the fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw onto here my design. So you can sketch this on with some chalk, with some pencil if you have it, or if you're feeling brave, you can always just go for it as well. Hopefully you can see there, but I've got um, a very quick design on there of just a little person. So now I'm going to place that where I want to. I'm going to ignore these little bits for now. I'm just going to start with this one. And then I'm actually just going to pin it on. And be, mind your fingers here, obviously the pins are nice, are very sharp. If you don't have a pin, you can always just hold it in place as well. So the next thing to do is get my embroidery thread. So that's your thicker thread. It looks a little bit like this. It might have some, um, some tape on it um, and thread your needle. So I've got for this, for this one with my embroidery thread, I've got the, th the um, larger needle, which has a larger eye. So that's where you put your thread through and it's the hole at the end of the needle. And then what I'm going to do is just tie a knot in the end here, tied a knot here to make it nice and secure so that when I pull th when I pull the thread through, it's not going to come all the way through. So then starting from the back, so this is the back of the fabric that isn't going to be seen. We're going to put our needle in and come up around our design. So I'm going to come up here. The good thing about using chalk for this is that it will disappear um, it washes off or it sometimes just disappears with air as well. So do be careful if you're using um, a pencil or whatever, you have to use it very lightly because that's going to be less likely to come off. So we're going to do the running stitch. So I've come out here and now that's gone through there. And you can see that my knot is in the back of the fabric there. So then I'm just going to go in and out of the fabric all the way around my design. So I've come back out there. I 
and then come back there. So you can see that I'm starting to make stitches there. And then I've got the same similar thing on the back as well. So I come up from the back of the fabric, pull my needle all the way through so that it's um, nice and uh, tight there. Not too tight, but um, not loose. And then I go back in. And then if you're feeling confident with that stitch, you can always come right back out as well. So not turn over the fabric. But you can see I've um, gone in and come out of the needle, keeping the fabric here. If it's been a bit tough to get through, just give it a little wiggle and it should help you out there as well. And once you're happy that the fabric's going to stay in place, if you do have a pin, you can take that out because it's going to get in the way and it might spike you. So I've done what's going to be my head there. So I'm going to move down to the body. Again, just following the pattern that you've drawn on. Or if you haven't drawn it on, um, just the wherever you want to go. And it's easier on this these straight bits to go in and out, in and out, so you can see. I've got the needle, that's the needle there as well. So it's gone in and out a few times. And you just have to pull the needle all the way through. And then make sure you keep flattening it out so that you don't bunch up your fabric at any point. So you can do any design that you want um, and you doesn't have to use, I've used this extra fabric here, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You could do it um, straight onto the, um, straight onto the fabric. You could just embroider or um, you can make shapes out of the, the, like cut the shape out of the fabric itself, scrap fabric, whatever you want. You can get nice and creative with this. Um, and you should be able to hopefully see it's a bit of a busy print, but I'm starting to get um, a little person on here. And if you're um, not quite sure what you want to do, you can always sketch it out on paper first as well. And that might help with your spacing and um, and where you want everything to go and just help you get a few ideas down as well. Great, so hopefully you should be able to see there that there is um, a little stick person there on this fabric. And then when I'm happy with that one, I'm just going to tie a knot in the fabric at the back so I can take my needle out so it doesn't spike you. And then just tie, tie a knot in the back there. And you want it tight, but you don't want it too tight so that your fabric bunches up. So I can put off that excess when I'm done. So that's just my first one done. And then what I will do is gonna, I'm gonna add two extra ones here, but just for the um, 
uh, just to save time today, I'm just going to move on to the next bit to show you. So now once you finish your design and you've done everything that you want to do on this patch, what you then would do is we're now going to make this fold over bit. So turn onto the back and you just lay it down flat and then we're going to turn over and um, just tuck it under so it's about half a centimetre you want to turn it over. And then what you're going to do is fold it over again until you see that line that you've drawn and you're going to fold it on that line. And we're going to press it down here. And then I'm going to pin it now, but if you don't have pins at home, um, you can use um, pegs work or any sort of clip and you just clip that onto there to keep everything in place whilst you're getting ready to sew it. And again, be careful um, with all the sharp things as well. So I'm gonna pin that in place and pinning in place just keeps it everything nice and straight when we're, for when we're sewing and we don't have to worry about it moving too around too much. It's all ready done. Brilliant. So um, now that I've pinned it, I can start to sew it. So I'm going to, um, you should all have a bobbin with some thread on in your packs. And this is our hand, this is the hand sewing um, thread. So it's a bit tougher than our embroidery thread and it's a bit thinner. Um, so that's why we use it for sewing up things like this and not the decoration like we were using before. So you just want to cut um, a length of that. And then you're going to get um, your uh, easy threading hand sewing needle. So this one has a, um, uh, a bit of a dip at the top. It's not very easy to show on camera. It's very, very small. But on top of your eye, um, you've got some little pincers, pince type shapes. And the way that this easy threading works um, is if you put your thread between that, you can just pull it down. And then that's my needle threaded. I wasn't that obvious on a, um, I'll try and do that on a better background. It's a bit more obvious, but so I've got this, some little pincers here and I'm just gonna put the thread between them and then pull down and that's my needle now threaded. Very easy, you don't have to mess around with fiddly eyes. So once you've got that like that, um, we're going to sew up this um, back bit and we're going to do the same stitch as before. So that's a running stitch. So again, you can just tie a couple of knots in the end of your fabric because you always want to make sure, at the end of your thread, sorry, because um, you always want to make sure that it's nice and secure and it's not just going to come straight out again. So There you go. And then the same thing we're going to, come up here and you just want to get right to the edge. So we're going to sew along this edge here and um, just catching this. So you just go in and out. And then you can take out the pins as you go because we only need them to hold it in place. So once we, we get there, it's fine. Um, so the running stitch again, you can go in and out. So I've gone into the fabric and then back out again. And then in and out again. And you do that all the way along. And if you do have any bits of your design that have gone over here, um, it's fine to sew over them because it's going to keep it secure. But if you can um, kind of hide under them, then that's also great as well because it makes it a little bit neater. So you should be able to see there that I've got my um, running stitch along. You're going to have to forgive my hands as well. I've been um, painting today and so there, I promise it's uh, just paint, <laughs> but it's made my hands a bit mucky. So 
Okay, I'm gonna go through again. And because I've got a flappy bit, I can just do that. But if you didn't have a flappy bit, you just kind of work around it. My needle's come in thread there, but we can just do what we did before. If that happens to you, don't worry. Just put it between there and pull down and it's threaded again. Very, very easy. And as you're going, do just make sure that it's all staying tucked underneath at the back. So just like that. So it's nice and neat. And then when we get to the end, like this, we just need to tie another knot in. And I'll teach you a bit of a trick for tying a knot in um, fabric with your needle. So instead of just tying it, and it, it can be a bit hard to get them at the end, what you can do is put your needle in like that. So all I've done is caught the fabric a tiny bit, I've gone in and out and just caught it a tiny bit. Um, and then I'm gonna get this thread that's coming from my needle, and then I'm gonna wrap it round a couple of times, two or three times like that, so that's wrapped around the needle there. And then I can just pull my needle through like normal. And then that's now a knot in the fabric there. I mean, not in the thread there. So then I can cut that off. And you'll find now that you've got a tube here, a little channel um, for uh, to make our banner. So if you do have, there's a couple of ways you can do this now. What we want to do is string this up so that we can hang this um, banner up. So there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm actually going to use a straw because that keeps everything nice and straight. So just got a paper straw here. Um, and then I'm going to take some string, some embroidery thread, sorry, or if you have string or whatever you'd like to use. Um, and then just thread that up again if you take your it's the chenille needle, so but it's just that one with the larger eye, um, just easier to thread because you've obviously got thicker thread for this one. And then you just want to feed this through here, but it just makes it a bit easier if you do have something like a needle on it, just a bit heavier because it helps it to go down the straw. And if you keep feeding it through, feeding it, there you go, you should see it come out there. And then what we can do, we've uh, threaded up that straw, we can then put that in the channel like so. And then we have a banner. So you can see that that one comes out like this. So it holds up and then you can string that up wherever you'd like to. Um, but it just makes it nice and straight. If you don't have a straw, it doesn't matter. You can just um, string it up and it'll do the same thing. And it'll look very nice um, hung up wherever you'd like. And that is our first banner. So the next thing we're going to do is go onto the flag. Um, so we have our flag. So we're going to use the same um, sensor that we used before. We're going to cut that out again, exactly like we did for the banner. Um, and the only difference this time is that we're just going to turn it um, 90 degrees so that it's on its side. So it's more like landscape instead of um, our air vertical. Um, so you can see here, this is the um, uh, flag that I've made earlier. So it's a, it's a tree to rep represent all the green spaces in Molly Range, which says loads and that they're, and they're wonderful. Um, so I've done this exactly the same way, apart from obviously the, I've, I've turned it around. Um, and the only other thing that I've done differently is I've so when I've sewn up this channel here, I've also sewn up the top of my flag. So I've come to the top of my channel and I've sewn this up here. And um, so you want to do that. And then to make it into a flag, the next thing you want to do is I've just got a stick that I found outside. You can use anything you want, but just that's longer than this channel, just um, straight and that will keep it um, 
so they're nice and straight. And then I'm just going to put that into the channel. And because I sewed up the top there, that's not going to go through. Um, and then there I have my flag. Just like this. So you can wave it, you can it's um, do whatever design you want on it, but that is how your flag works. <laughs> so there are our first two tutorials. And next we're going to move on to um, our Celebrate Bunting. Um, so for this one, we want to use this smaller um, pattern piece here. So it's the bunting and pocket stencil. And we're going to do the bunting first. So what we want to do for this is cut out nine, um, nine pieces of this. So you're going to lay it onto your fabric. And if you, um, and you're going to cut out this nine times again, keeping it nice and close to the edge of your fabric, and um, so that you're not wasting fabric when you do it. If you have pins, it might be easier to fold over your fabric, or even if you draw on as well. But just fold over your fabric, and then you can, um, when you draw on or pin it, you can then cut out two at a time, and that'll save you a little bit of time. We want nine in total. So when you've cut it out, it will look a little bit like this. Um, and then you want nine of these. Obviously, I'm just going to go through the first one just to, to save time. Um, but you'll have nine of these. And um, so then the next thing we want to do is take our celebrate stencils. So you notice that you've got lots of letters in your pack printed out. It'll look a bit a bit strange, cell brat. Um, but what we actually want to do here is cut out all the letters and then to spell celebrate, you probably know this already, but it's three E's. So it's going to be C-E-L-E-B-R-A-T-E. -E -E. And that's how we're going to spell out our bunting. So once you've cut all of them out, um, like I've done with my C here, you're then going to get the felt that's in your pack and then you're going to draw around it. So I've put this on here and then I've drawn around it with chalk. Um, so once you've done that, you are going to cut out that, that C. So be very careful with your scissors. Um, but you're just going to go around and cut that out. And you're going to do that with all your other letters as well. And remembering to have three E's. And you can do that. They don't all have to be in the same color. It might be nice if they're all in different colors um, to keep it. Um, a bit more exciting. But again, it's your design, so whatever you would like to do. Oops. So once I have... <clears throat> Oh, sorry. So once I have those things cut out, um, and you might want, if you do have any chalk on the back, um, you can flip it over. Obviously, that works for the C because you can flip it over, but it won't work for the other things like the R and so. Um, so I want to put this on here. I'm actually thinking I might add a little bit of extra um, decoration as well. So if you want to, you can just cut out, I might put this on a bit of a backing. I like this material. I like lots of patterns personally. So the more the better. I'm just going to cut roughly around it in a kind of square. Like so. Make it a bit smaller. You can decorate these any way you want. So um, 
more or less patterns, however you like. Um, do one more. Great, so then I want to um, sew all of that on together. And again, I'm going to use the same as we did before. So we already know what we're doing with that. I'm going to take some embroidery thread um, and just cut off a length. It's always a good idea when you're sewing to, to cut off um, from your, so you take it in your hand and then you cut off to your, if you take it to your elbow and then you cut off just um, to the other side of that. And that way you're not going to get nice and you're not going to get tangled when you're sewing up. It's good, good tip to know. Again, we're going to tie a knot in the back of that. In the in the end of that. Like that. And once I've got everything lined up with where I want it to be. And again, you can pin this in place to get again um, if you want to. You can peg it in place, but you can also just hold it. We're not working with materials that move around too much, and um, so it's not too bad. And then to say, so what I'm going to do is just sew this on. So I'm going to do a running stitch all the way around the middle. So like come in from the back again, and just be careful if you're if you're not looking where you're going, just make sure you're not getting at your fingers. Um, and then I'm going to get all the way around so I'm doing that in out in out and you can take your pins out as you get to them and keep straightening it as you go because you know, with the running stitch, if I pull too much, then that's going to crumple the fabric, and I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be nice and flat. So as you're going, just make sure you keep it nice and flat. So once I've got to the end, I just want to make sure it's at the back again. So I've, my thread's coming out of the back and then I'm just going to tie it uh, in a knot. So I can do that. I've put it under this thread just to keep it in. And then the same trick we learned before. So you just wrap it around a couple of times and then I can pull my needle out. And that's going to have it in a knot. And then I can chop that off. And there's my first letter done. Um, so I've got my C there, and then I'm going to carry on and do all my other letters as well, decorating them however you'd like to, but until you've got all of those patches there. And so once we've got our bunting pieces, what we need to do is make the string to attach them all at the top. And so you can do this with an old T-shirt pretty magical. So if you take an old t-shirt and you lay it out like so, what we're the first thing we're going to do is snip along there. So take a t-shirt and just snip off and just under the armpit. So we just want this bit here and we want to get rid of this bit at the top. So we're just going to cut just there. So you'll be left with a piece like this at the top, which I've cut off for the bit I'm working on, and we're going to throw that away. Or find another use for it, use it as a, a cleaning rag or whatever. And so then just to show you on this one, the next thing I'm going to do, so I've been left with this bit, I'm going to turn it sideways so that when I lay it out on the table, remember this bit's gone, these side seams, which you have one on both sides, they're going to be joined up. They're going to be meeting in the middle. 
and then everything else is going to be nice and flat here. So you're going to lay it out like that. And then I'm going to show you what you get with the next stage. We're going to do, cut into it and this mess here, which I will lay out and show you nicely what I've done. But you can see I've got my side seam in the middle there and I've got my other side seam there. And then what I've done is just cut strips into the um, into the T-shirt from the side so that they are folded over like that's still um, that's still intact still. And I've stopped just a couple of centimeters away from the um, center on both sides. So I've just kind of gone in there, um, and you can see there that I've got that it looks a bit like ribs or something. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut. Um, firstly, we just want to cut through one layer. So you need to get your scissors and be careful if you've got quite sharp scissors. And we're just going to cut through um, diagonally. So you can see this bit here, and we're going to cut to the top of there. So we're going to get up like that. But the thing we want to do is make sure we're only getting this top layer. So when we cut it, We're going to go up like that, I'm going to say diagonally up like that, just through that top layer. So you can see my back layer is still intact. And that's an, um, and then we're going to do the same thing. So now I'm going from this point here to this point here, so diagonally upwards. And just being very careful not to catch that layer underneath. Because then you would not get the string at the end. So I'm going to go like this. And this is a great way to use up an old t-shirt if you have it, you know, if you've grown out of it or if it's got um, stained or mucky and it won't wash out anymore, end of its life. It's a great way to use up old t-shirts. So then I'm just going Here again, if you have any tags that come out, you can just get rid of them. And then just one last one here. So from the, the same point as it would be up to that one. And then the thing to do, you want to keep it nice and flat now. We don't want to move this too much because we don't want it to get confused. Um, but what we're going to do is start cutting through the back layer, but we're not going to do diagonally this time. So we're going to do something a little bit different. But if I just move that away here, you can see this is my back portion. I'm going to just going to cut across horizontally. Like so, and then I move them up and try not to move it around too much as you're doing this because it you might just get confusing. You want to keep it as flat as possible, but I'm just going to move that top layer out of the way and find where my back is, my back bit joins, and I can see there. And then I'm just going to cut horizontally through that. Nice and messy. I'm going to do that all the way down. And then I've got one more to do here. I'm going to cut that. There you go. So essentially what we've done is just spiraled the whole way down the t-shirt um, middle. And so that this is now one long length of string, which is going to be perfect for sewing our bunting. But there is one more step to do first. And what we want to do is, because this is um, jersey, which means it's stretchy fabric, what you want to do is just pull it and just stretch it out because it's going to stretch out anyway. So it's best that we do this now. And then we know um, that when we sew it on, that it's not going to move around too much anymore. So all I'm doing is pulling here and you'll see that it starts to, to um, fold up like that. Looks different from the rest of this. So I'm just going to fold that. It's quite firm, gives you, just pull that through. And you see that I've got Nice long t-shirt yarn here. If you need if any sort of string, you can use this if you ever do a, a macrame or anything like that. Oh, my arms are getting tired. 
We might have to get mum or dad to help with this one. Or, or a friend, you could do a tug of war. And go all the way through until you did every, got right to the end, every last bit. So you might find it a little bit hard to see the hem didn't do that there. So what I am actually going to do is chop the hem off of this one. And the hem is where it's folded over and sewn. So because that's there, it's not stretching for me. So I'm just going to chop that off. Probably won't need the rest of that, so I'm just gonna. There we go. So now I've got a long pile of string now that I can make my bunting with. So what I'm gonna do is come back to my letters, and I want to. So you're gonna now you're gonna have to do a little bit of spelling, not too much, um, but we're gonna set it out so that you've got a bit of a tail at the end. So I don't want to start my C right here. Um, I'm gonna just leave like. Um, about a foot or so, about 30 centimetres or so. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want to, I'm going to sew this into my, um, sew this onto my bunting patch. So what I want to do, you should see that probably what's going to happen is when you stretch out your t-shirt, your you get a bit of a natural fold and a natural curl. We're just going to kind of use that and we're going to sandwich our patch in between that, like so. Uh, again, you can use pegs or, um, pins if you have them. And then we're going to use our um, bobbin thread again. So if you remember, that's on this little um, thing that you've got in your pack. And then you're going to use your hand sewing, easy threading hand sewing needle. And then cut off a length of that. And then what we're going to do again is just do running stitch all along there where we've where we've pinned. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got a knot in the end of your thread, as always, to keep it nice and secure. You're experts at this bit by now. And just do a couple of knots that doesn't come through. And then we're just going to do a running stitch, taking our needles out as we go. All the way along. And you would have nine um, of these obviously to do after that. Eight more to do. And I mean, even if you wanted to add a, like one on the end, you could do an exclamation mark on the end or you could just do a nice um, picture on the end if you wanted to. If nine is, isn't too many, too many for you. I'm gonna go all the way to the end. And then tie a knot, knot in the back again. And then when I've chopped that off, then you can see I've got my first patch attached. And then once you've done all of those patches, it's going to end up looking something a little bit like this so you can see i've got my string and then i've got my c my e my l my e and then b k 
kind of keep it all in shot for you. R, A, T, E, and we've got to celebrate. So you've done all of them. You can see we've stitched all of them on and then gone and stitched them all on um, to the string. And then once you've got an end like this, that means that this, uh, if you've got ends on both ends like this, it's kind of easier to tie up. And you can see we've, um, if you just tie a loop here, so if I tie it and um, loop it over and then just tie that loop into a knot, you see that I actually get a, a loop at the end there and then that makes it even easier to hang up so you can just hook it onto something, put it in the window and let everyone know that you're celebrating, just like that. And that is our bunting. So our final thing, our fourth way to fly our flag is a t-shirt pocket. So what we're going to do here again is with that smaller stencil that I've put down somewhere in a safe place as always. I'm already cut out here, so I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to use this end to just use it. And then this, um, for this one, you want to just choose a fabric out of, out of what you've out of your selection that you want to add onto a shirt. So if you've got an old shirt, um, or not even, or it doesn't have to be old, a new shirt, but that you just want to add, um a bit of flair to and a bit of your own personality to. Then we're going to show you how to put on a pocket and it's going to work as a pocket so you can keep things in it. You can see I'm just drawing around this. And then I'm going to use my fabric scissors to this nice and messy. And I'm just cutting out that shape there. Now I have this shape again. And then so the next thing we want to do is draw in our seam allowances. And this is the similar thing to what we did, if you remember, with the banner um, and the flag. And we just want to um, make it so that we know exactly where we can sew and, that, and where it's going to get folded over. Because we don't want to have it where you sew a really nice, beautiful thing. Um, and then it turns out that we've done it too big and that we're going to lose some of it. So we don't want that to happen. And the way we're going to get down that um, is by drawing in our seam allowances. So you can use a pencil. If you have chalk for this, then that's great. But if you don't, then you can use a pencil or a pen. Um, just be careful not to make the lines too, too big. Just the one line. So I'm just going to use a pencil here. And what I'm going to do, so I want to do a two centimetre seam allowance at the top. So I'm going to measure down two centimetres here and mark it. Then I'm going to measure two centimetres here and mark it. And then I'm going to join up those lines with my ruler. And then I'm going to measure one centimetre for all my other ones. So for the, these four line edges, I'm going to measure one centimetre. And then join up that one. Feels like maths, but I promise it's not proper maths. And then one centimetre here. Thank you. 
and then you should see that you'll be left with um, you've drawn yourself the same shape but a little bit smaller onto your fabric and then this is the space that we can work in and this is going to be the, the shape of our final pocket so what we can um, do now is uh, plan our design so for this one for me I'm going to do a little um, terrapin well a turtle it's going to look like but they have uh, in Alexandra Park they have um, in the lake they have terrapins and I thought that was such a great unique thing that Wally Range has um, so I want to put that on a pocket and then wear it on my shirt so that everyone knows I'm celebrating Wally Range um, so I'm going to start off by here I've just cut out a bit of material this is felt and I've cut out a shape um, and I'm going to sew that on first I'm just going to sew around the center and then I'm just going to sew on a little head and some little arms for my terrapin so that it's nice and happy um, so again, I'm going to pin this on, but it's not too essential if you don't have a pin. And you're going to take your embroidery um, thread again and um, your larger needle, so the chenille needle, which has the larger eye. And so I'm going to cut a length of thread. Thread up my needle. This one's a bit harder to thread because it's not, even though the eye's much bigger, it doesn't have that easy thread thing where you can just put it down. And then I'm going to tie a couple of knots in that. And then so for this, because I want him to make it look like there is a little turtle on here, uh, I'm just going to sew just kind of like a centimetre in, but this bit's completely up to your design, whatever you'd like. I'm not going to draw that on because I'm just going to use the edge of my the circle I've cut out as a guide. I'm going to get all the way around the edge and again I'm just doing running stitch here so that's where I'm going in and out just like we've been doing before. And it doesn't matter if you get things caught like that, as long as you just keep making sure it's flat each time you go around. I can take that pin out once it's nice and secure. You never want extra pins lying around. And I'm going to join it up here. So I'm just going to stop just before here and bring my needle out to the edge. So that is what the start of my um, turtle is going to look like. And then I'm just going to, you might have seen from my stick figure that I am not the best artist. But that's why I like sewing, because you can be nice and um, do big things and it doesn't have to be as intricate. So I'm just going around here and then this is going to be my head. And then I'm just going to make sure it's behind. So if I'm ever going to a new place and what you can do is when to, I'm going to go to a new place now, I'm going to do some legs here, maybe give it a little tail, but um, if you're ever doing that, then you can you can tie a, a knot in the back and cut your thread and start again. Um, and that will make it look neater by the end because you won't have lots of crisscrossing threads on the back all around the place. So what you would do here is just um, tie a knot in this bit and then cut it off. And then when you start again, you'd tie a new knot in your thread. And then 
need to start again wherever you wanted to, and that's going to is going to make it neater at the end. So I'm just going to do little feet for there. And I'm not going to do the knots just to save time on this one, but you could do that if you wanted to. So you can kind of, hopefully it's obvious on camera, that this is a turtle. Or I don't actually, I'm not, no good with the different, oh, I've unthreaded it there. But I'm no good with the differences of terrapins and turtles and what exactly they are. But maybe you can go down to Alexandra Park and see if you can spot them. Just come and thread it here, so I'm just gonna and just do one more up here. And when you're happy, you can obviously do this as detailed or as not detailed as you'd like. Um you can do lots of embroidery if you like the embroidery, or you can do lots of cutting out and um, sewing on, whichever one you like. And then when we're done, we're just going to tie that in a knot at the back. And then that's our, that's whenever your design's finished, we're going to move on to the next part. So we're just going to cut that go there. And you won't have these lines because you'll have cut it out uh, in between. And so the next thing we do once you're happy with your design um, is we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So we're just uh, with our banner and our flag, if you can remember that. So we're just going to fold it over a tiny bit, just like half a centimetre, and then fold it over again until we're folding it on the line. So this long here now is that line that I drew on. So I'm not sure you can see it on the camera, but I've just folded it down one and then I folded it to that line. And then I'm just going to pin that in place. And so then the reason we do that is because we want to get, we want to, um, that edge of our fabric, we don't want that to be on show when our final pocket is done. We want it to have a nice neat edge. I'm going to make that have a nice neat edge now. And so we're going to, again, use our, this is our thinner thread. So this is the thread from the bobbin that you have. So that's that little plastic um, circle. We're going to tie a knot in it in the back. So I'm working on the back of my fabric. So anything messy you do, like the knots or anything like that, you want it to be on the back. So not where your nice, pretty picture is. You want that to be on the back. Um, and then we're just going to do the running stitch again. So we're going to go in and out in and out all the way along the edge and we don't want to pull it too tight because then we're going to um, scrunch up our fabric and we're going to go all the way along so I'm just going to miss out my turtle's head And then carry on all the way along, taking the pins out as I go. So 
till I've got to the end. And so we've made that nice, neat edge now. Um, so we're just going to tie that in a knot to finish it off. And that's going to be the top of our pocket. So the next thing we want to do, I'm just going to um, do this with my fingers. But if you have an adult to help you, then you can use the iron to do this next bit. And what we're actually going to do is fold it over to the to the lines that we've drawn on. So I'm going to fold over one centimetre and that should be on the line that I drew on in the beginning. Um, and I'm just going to press this with my fingers just to put it down. And so we're going to start at the, the we're going to start these two first. So we're going to start down here. We're going to press this nice and flat. And this is called pressing um, when you do it with an iron. So if you do have an iron, you can do it with that. But I am just going to press it down with my fingers. Um, and then I can open that out and then press this one down as well. So I'm going to press that there. And then if you press if you press one and then open out and then press the other, you should find that when you do fold it, you can get a nice point. You can fold that back in again, and then you can get a nice point on the edge on the end of your um your flat or your pocket. Sorry. And I'm just going to put a pin in that for now, just because I haven't used the iron. If you use an iron, it's going to stay nice and flat without you doing anything. I'm just going to pin that in place. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't pin this if I had an iron. And then once I've done this one, do the same on the side, fold that in one centimeter. So you're just folding it into all of the lines that you drew before. So you know exactly where you're going to. And so when you're doing the corners, you can see, so I folded it down. I'm just going to um, just kind of make a point in the top and then fold it over to one way. So if you can see, it, it'll be like that. And then I'm just going to fold that over to one way. And then that makes it nice and neat. So that on the other side, you can't tell that there's two lots of fabric there. I fold that one there, just pin that in place. And then this is going to be my final pocket. So the thing that we need to do now, now that it's all pressed and nice, is put it on to the shirt. So if you take a shirt here, and you can see here I've got a finished one where you can see the pocket on. Um, and we're now going to sew this on. So what you would do is put it on like this, and then you could pin it in place. You'd pin it all in place onto that. Um, so obviously, if I because I've got these pins in, I would take them out. Um, you pin it into place exactly where you want. And the thing to remember is you don't want it to go through both layers of the shirt. You just want this to go through the top layer. So I've got I've got got my hand in between there. Um, so I make sure I'm not doing that. And the way you can do it is you're using a shirt if you unbutton it because you don't want your hands in the way when you're trying to pin. So if you unbutton it like this. And you can just lay it out so you've only got, oh, I haven't done the bottom bit. You can lay it out like that and then you can just pin that top one. And then what you would do is then do your running stitch all the way around. So I'm not going to do it on this lovely shirt because it's already done. But you tie the knot in the back and then I'm going to do my running stitch in and out there. And then I'm just going to do these four edges. And that means, as you can see from this one, that when I'm done, this is attached, but I've got a pocket. So you can keep your pens in there, your sweets in there, whatever you like. And these ones are all um, sewn on. And there you've got a pocket. So there you go. You've got your four ways to fly your flag. Um, and I hope this tutorial helps you to make them and um, I hope you have a great time doing it too. So thank you.